Cuba celebrates Workers' Day. The leader of the revolution, Raúl Castro, and the president of Cuba, Miguel Díaz-Canel, led workers' rally in Havana. Bolivian Congress and at Gola to strengthen the country's net international reserves. The World Health Organization, WHO, announced the end of the global health emergency for the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus, which causes COVID-19. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. Thousands of Cubans filled the country's squares on Friday to celebrate International Workers' Day after the, the postponements of the activities on May the 1st. Thousands of representatives of the island's working class gathered on the Malecón in Havana to celebrate the event with the presence of Army General Raúl Castro Ruz, President Miguel Díaz-Canel and other leaders of the island. Our correspondent, Alessandra Andrés, with the details from the Cuban capital. was not the plaza of the revolution, but the Havana Malecón. And although the date of celebration was not the same, thousands of locals gathered from very early in the morning at this iconic site to celebrate International Workers' Day. We have dedicated these festivities of the world proletariat to the daily heroism of our people to the high responsibility and the decisive contribution of the workers to higher economic results, centered on increasing and diversifying food production. Amid a complex fuel supply scenario, the traditional May 1st parade was replaced throughout the island by events and activities in each municipality. It is not the traditional thing, but it's very good. There has been a big crowd and people want to be here to support Cuba. That's why, for me, it's very important to be here today. I am very happy. From this seafront drive, which has witnessed hundreds of marches and rallies where the Cuban people have ratified their right to sovereignty, many affirmed that the greater the imperialist attempt to suffocate the Cuban people, the greater still the response of the inhabitants of this island will be. I believe that this is part of our culture, of our tradition of resistance and emancipation. I believe there are many reasons for us to send a very clear message the more they squeeze us, the more they try to suffocate us, the more we will unite, the more we will mobilize, the more we will fight and we will never give up. And I believe that it is very important to send a message like this in the present circumstances. It has been very exciting to be here, to see how the Cuban people support the workers who are the real protagonists and their history here in Cuba. That does not happen in the United States, and that's why we are fighting to remove the blockade. In the face of those who did not bet on large concentrations in the midst of the shortages and difficulties faced by this country, the response was a popular celebration. What has kept the revolution going has been precisely the fact of believing in it. And although the economic aspect is fundamental, fighting for something that goes beyond the strictly economic and temporary crisis is also fundamental. I believe that if the revolution has managed to survive this long, it's precisely due to its crisis coping ability that has got us out of very tense moments like the one we are currently in. The revolution has survived thanks to its great spirit. What do young Cubans have to defend? I think we have to defend the sovereignty we have, the opportunity to grow life and study in a country that has supported us at all times, the opportunity to study in a tuition-free university, and also the opportunity to live in a revolutionary process that is very different from others in the world, the opportunity to grow up and live in a peaceful country. According to President Miguel Díaz-Canel, every day is a good day to celebrate the workers. That is why May 5th became a great celebration all over Cuba. Lisandra Andrés, Telesur, La Habana.
And earlier on Friday, Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador stayed during Bishop from China. The president made a statement during his morning briefing on Friday where the, he said a shipment from China had arrived in the container to the port of Lázaro Cárdenas in the state of Michoacán. In April this year, the, the Latin American president sent a letter to his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping in which he asked him to work together the, to the fight against this opiate. Bolivian Congress uh, and added go law to uh, strengthen the country's uh, net international reserves. After the Senate approved the legislation that will go to the executive power for its promulgation. Under the gold law, the Central Bank of Bolivia will have to keep at least 22 tons of gold in its net international reserves and uh, carry out uh, financial operations with the rest uh, to obtain a foreign exchange. The country uh, reported a fall of its international reserves uh, by up to $3.5 billion in March as well as a short years of foreign currency. On Thursday, Peruvian Justice Minister Daniel Maurate ratified the violations of human rights during the repression of social practices in the country. This is the first time that an official on the Boluarte administration admits accountability for the incident. For his part, Prime Minister Alberto Tarola categorically outruled that the police brutally his goals to the prosecutor's office and the court as uh, he defended uh, the military and police, pointing out that they were safeguarding sovereignty. Let's take a very short break now, but remember you can now follow us on our TikTok account as well English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates and more. Stay tuned for more news. Welcome back to From the South. Brazilian state-run company Petrobras announced it will create a working group with China Energy International to analyze joint businesses opportunities for the generation of renewable energy and green hydrogen. The, Venezuelan com the Brazilian company, my pardon, said on Thursday that the two parties intend to start developing businesses opportunities as of the second half of this year. According to Petrobras, the partnership with the Chinese company reinforced its new management guidelines to expand the investments in the renewable energy file in order to guarantee a smooth energy trans transition. Brazilian President Luiz Ignacio Lula da Silva arrived in London on Friday to participate in the coronation of Charles III's skin of the United Kingdom at Westminster Abbey on Saturday. Lula met with British Premier Richie Sonat on Friday. The two discussed trade, technological cooperation and environmental issues. Currently, no new bilateral agreements are expected to be signed. Lula spoke on March the 6th by telephone with Charles III about pacts between both nations and climate issues. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov have declared his country will respond with severe measures to the drone attack on the Kremlin. It's seen the proverbs uh, Russia takes a long time to settle the horses. He assured that they will not respond by the take talking about cases badly, but with concrete actions. The head of the Russian the diplomacy also recalled that they have been very patient and committed on the statements of both U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Kiev, assuring that the leader speaks volumes for Lavrov. The negative reactions of Ukraine and the United States leave much unexplained. Uh, if you believe that as soon as the United States and Ukraine rejected the accusations, 
we should stop thinking uh, what we know about. This is not the case. And uh, the ability of our uh, Ukrainian and Western friends to lie uh, is very well known. Uh, and the entire, the entire situation uh, is illustrating, is illustrating the crisis, uh, which is much, much deeper than just the behavior of the uh, regime headed by uh, Zelensky. In Belgium, the Prime Minister Alexander de Croo pledged to transfer to Ukraine a uh, portion of the 180 billion euros illegally seized from Russian patrimony. According to the Prime Minister de Croo, the money will be distributed in the military military aid and support for the Ukrainian refugees. The official detail that used in Russian money to rebuild Ukraine makes the economy and moral sense. In this regard, Russia called Western attempts to transfer the size of Moscow assets to the Ukrainian government barbaric and assured that it will take action. One man was killed and buildings collapsed in Japan after a strong earthquake struck near the country's west central coastal on early Friday. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the 6.2 magnitude earthquake struck at 2.42 p.m. local time, about 50 kilometers off the coast of Anamisu in Ashikawa province at a depth of 8.7 kilometers. However, a report from Japan's meteorological agency places the epicenter of the land near the Noro in the Ishikawa province and a, a 6.3 magnitude with a depth of 10 kilometers. Thousands of people were evacuated from their homes early on Friday after a series of wildfires hit the Canadian province of Alberta. The town of Drayton was under a mandatory evacuation as well as other rural areas southwest and west of Edmonton. Thousands of wildfires started on Tuesday and have led to evacuation of more than 10,000 people. Most of central Alberta is under a fire ban after a period of windy and unseasonable hot conditions with little change in rain in the forecast. Telesur English continues to grow. You can now tune in from 33 different African countries through StarSat. Dial 461 and join our Latin American alternative broadcast. One financial break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Friday, Israeli occupation forces injured five people during the repression of demonstrations. The incident took place in the midst of the weekly demonstration against the Kartha Karum settlements east uh, called the Kilia in the West Bank. The Palestinian press reported that the occupying Israeli soldiers stormed the village and attacked demonstrators with bullets and tear gas bombs, causing injuries to five of them and suffocating thousands. It was also revealed that lands under the, the Zionist regime's occupations are not home of uh, never-ending demonstrations. On Friday, heavy fighting in the Sudanese capital of Khartoum deported the, the efforts uh, to deliver badly needed to trap civilians after yet another fragile and frequently violent uh, truce run out. Sudan has pledged into chaos since uh, fighting erupted in mid-April between the, the country's two rival top generals. 
There is increasing concern for those trapped and displaced by the fighting, and aid workers and civilians have said that there are a lack of basic services, medical care, food and water. The World Health Organization, WHO, announced on Friday the end of the global health emergency for the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus, which is COVID-19. According to the WHO Director General Tedros Adnahan on Thursday, the emergency committee met with the 15th time and recommended that he declare the end of the public health emergency of international concern. The director advised that he was taking that decision but with caution and that that is the global epidemiological situation change. He will not hesitate to declare the emergency against the head of the world. The World Health Organization stressed the need to learn from lessons left by the pandemic because otherwise the cycle of panic and neglect that was the hallmark of the global response to epidemics and pandemics from decades will be repeated. Yesterday, the emergency committee met for the 15th time and recommended to me that I declare an end to the public health emergency of international concern. I have accepted that advice. It's therefore with great hope that I declare COVID-19 over as a global health emergency. On May the 5th marks the 205th birth of the German philosopher and founder of scientific communism, Karl Marx. The German philosopher was born on May the 5th 1818 interred in the Rhine province of the Russia and is mostly remembered today as a revolutionary thinker whose best known writing were the, the Communist Manifesto co authored with Friedrich Else Dash Capital and the 18 premiered of Louis Bonaparte. On the anniversary of his birth, different activities are organized worldwide to celebrate and honor his ideas of a society free of oppression and capitalist exploitation that will inspire millions around the world. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Telesur English, I'm from the South, I'm Ana Marrero, and thank you for watching.